Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to everyone. So, we were uh, discussing in the last class about uh, gaseous nitriding starting from the thermodynamics of uh, gaseous mixtures and if we place a solid samples inside a gaseous mixture maintained at a constant temperature and pressure, what will be the equilibrium. So, then in that context we have seen that when we use the N2 gas that is a molecular nitrogen gas as a source of nitrogen to introduce nitrogen into the solid samples, then we looked at how the thermodynamics uh, you know the of that particular situation. Then we have seen that from the phase diagram that so if you do the one atmospheric pressure of N2 has been imposed on the sample surface and which you do that at different temperatures then what we see is that we get a very small amount of nitrogen dissolvable in the BCC iron that is the ferrite right. This is the region where this is the maximum solubility is given by this line and we do not see that any other iron nitrogen compounds which are known as from the metastable iron nitrogen phase diagram right where we see that you have these two iron nitrides and also the amount of nitrogen which is dissolved in the ferrite is much higher than what we get from the N2 gas. Now, we want to see that how this kind of uh, you know the iron nitrides can be realizable by using instead of N2 gas if we use ammonia gas for nitrogen salts. So, now let us look at into the thermodynamics of it how that can be realizable. So, for quickly recapitulating when we use the N2 gas of N2 giving rise to nitrogen dissolved and then when we wrote these are actually uh, chemical potential of uh, nitrogen in the solid that is G n prime solid is given as half of G N2 naught this is for the gas plus half of RT ln pressure of N2 divided by the reference pressure P naught chosen for N2. This is how we have seen that the chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid can only be controlled or changed by changing the pressure of N2 that means at a given temperature right. So, that is where we have seen that. Now, if we use for the nitriding in ammonia hydrogen gas mixture. So, how can we understand the now that these values can be now tuned in a different way that is the strategy we have in finding the it from the ammonia hydrogen gas whether that can offer us a high values of chemical potential of nitrogen which we can impose on the solid. So, the reaction when we use ammonia hydrogen gas mixture can be seen as NH3 giving rise to N dissolved with hydrogen all hydrogen being produced as H 2 gas right. So, here we are able to dissolve if we start with 1 mole of ammonia gas we are able to dissolve 1 mole of nitrogen into that and by having a 3 by 2 H 2. Now, what does this situation imply is that at a given temperature and the total pressure. So, if we can 
maintain this values of the partial presence of hydrogen and ammonia in the gas mixture that means we fill in 3 by 2 H 2 and N H 3 in this ratio and if we can retain that then that will impose a certain amount of nitrogen into the solid. Now, here like in the case of N 2 gas how we can write the chemical potential of nitrogen yeah, that is in the solid. So, for that again we will start with delta G of this reaction should be also 0 at equilibrium. Now, how we can write that this will be chemical potential of NH 3 gas is equal to chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid plus 3 by 2 chemical potential of H 2 gas ok. This is all gaseous states. Now, this is what actually if you rearrange that then we can write ok. I will write it here G of nitrogen in the solid is given as now this is G of N H 3 that can be written with reference to the reference state G naught of N H 3 plus R T ln partial pressure of N H 3 divided by the reference pressure chosen for defining the reference Gibbs energy for the ammonia. And then and this quantity if you take it on to the left side that will be minus 3 by 2 G naught of H 2 minus 3 by 2 3 by 2 R T L n partial pressure of H 2 divided by the reference pressure chosen for defining the reference state Gibbs energy. Then the upon rearranging you can say that G n prime in the solid equal to G naught of N H 3 minus 3 by 2 G naught of H 2 plus R T L n partial pressure of N H 3 divided by partial pressure of H 2 power 3 by 2 and uh, it will be uh, uh, partial pressure of N H 3 it will be partial pressure of 3 by 2 and now actually the reference state pressures here we have the divided by P naught and into P naught power 3 by 2. So, that will be 3 by 2 minus 1 that will be 1 by 2. So, we will get P naught 1 by 2. So, this is how we can write the uh, this kind of a uh, the now the chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid ok. This quantity is now related to the standard Gibbs energies of the ammonia and the hydrogen and more importantly on the ratio of the partial pressure of ammonia by hydrogen partial pressure power 3 by 2 ok. So, now to have a comparison with the nitriding in the N 2 gas where we wrote the chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid in this fashion whereas, here we have it is to get a some comparison. So, if we can also bring in N 2 which is not at all there in this reaction then we can actually relate this to ok. That can be done by the following way. If we look at the, the ammonia dissociation right reaction ammonia uh, reaction when we consider dissociation of ammonia we wrote that as N H 3 going to half N 2 plus 3 by 2 H 2. So, when we write the, the delta G if we relate this to the delta G naught of this reaction is minus R T L n k right. This is what we know 
and now this delta g naught is given as the of g naught of n2 plus 3 by 2 g naught of h2 minus g naught of nh3 ok. So, now if I write here what will be the uh, you know the value of this quantity that is again given as minus r t ln k. So, now if we rearrange these terms then you see that of g n 2 naught okay, plus r t ln k equal to g naught of n h 3 minus 3 by 2 g naught of h 2. Okay. So, this is the quantity g naught of n h 3 minus 3 by 2 h 2 naught this is the value ok. One can substitute this quantity into this right then we can write this equation as g n of solid is given by half of g n to naught plus. So, we have here r t l n k. So, this can be taken into the uh, this part. So, then we take this as the uh, r t l n partial pressure of n h 3 divided by partial pressure of h 2 whole to the power 3 by 2 into k of this reaction right. So, I call this as reaction 1 for example, so that we can introduce that one here that means we are talking about the k of this reaction ok. So, that is what actually comes into the picture times p naught to the power of half. This is how now we are relating the now you see the comparison between these two relations that is here we have a ok. Now, if we see look at this this reaction and this reaction what we see is that in both the cases here we are getting some chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid when we use the N2 gas as an nitriding medium that is related to the partial pressure of N2. And now here in the case of a ammonia hydrogen gas what we see is that interestingly now we got the same sort of a reference state value for here too and this has got also the uh, this ratio of now partial pressure of ammonia by h 2 power 3 by 2. Now, by changing this ratio and because the value of this k is very high ok as you look at this one this delta g naught is uh, for this reaction will be very high. So, that means, for the we are able to impose the large magnitude of this quantity by maintaining some ratio of partial pressure of ammonia to hydrogen and then we are able to impose certain amount of uh, nitriding potential in the solid ok. Now, the thing is that we here we control now by controlling this ratio of partial pressure of ammonia and hydrogen the chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid. So, this quantity Okay. this partial pressure of ammonia and hydrogen is called nitriding potential. Usually with a small letter r and n as a subscript. Okay. So, this is how this has been now defined as a another quantity here this nitriding potential that is the potential of the atmosphere in order to nitride your solid sample 
he is represented here by the pressure of N2 and here that is represented by the ratio of this partial pressure of ammonia to hydrogen power 3 by 2. So, this is now at a given temperature we know at a given pressure we know that these two quantities are constant because this is the equilibrium constant of the reaction 1 and that remains constant and if you choose the reference pressure as constant then at a given temperature you can still vary the chemical potential of nitrogen by just changing this ratio ok. And being this as a large number ok, now say this will be able to actually provide a large value of the uh, chemical potential. Now by comparison of these two relations, now if you write elaborate this chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid, this can be written as G n naught of solid plus R t plus R t L n activity of nitrogen that is what we can represent to this and the same can be done also for this chemical potential of nitrogen in the solid. And then what you see is that by comparison of these quantities now if I choose the reference state this is the reference state of the N2 in the gaseous phase and this is for the solid state. Now for the uh, nitrogen you see the molecular nitrogen N2 and the atomic nitrogen N are treated as two different components. So, now because of that this N in the solid that implies actually if you take a what is the reference state for example, for chromium we take actually the pure chromium solid that is easy to visualize for somebody, but for the nitrogen we can treat it as a atomic nitrogen solid that means there is an equilibrium with one atmospheric N2 gas pressure. So, this way what we are saying is of G N2 naught is actually equal to G n of solid ok. So, this is what actually it implies and then we are relating now the activity of nitrogen to this quantity which is here. Now, one can also say that by controlling the nitriding potential we are also actually modifying the activity of nitrogen in the solid that is obvious because we are changing the chemical potential of nitrogen. Now, if we look into the phase diagram, now if we see that how we can now explain that we are able to produce the iron nitrides. Now, we want to see that how we can have this all these iron nitrides can come into picture. Now, according to this reaction NH3 going to N dissolved plus 3 by 2 H2. In order to have such a reaction in the actual practical situation by considering that ammonia is a very unstable molecule as we have seen that at a nitriding temperatures this wants to always dissociate producing N2 and H2. So, the trick is we have to maintain this ratio constant in the gas mixture. How can we do that? For example, if I have a furnace, then if I have my solid iron and if I feed in actually the NH3 and H2 at some chemistry and if I close this and at some temperature we know that this gas composition will continue to change and at one atmospheric pressure and we will end up with N2 H2 with a very small amount of NH3 in the chamber. That means, we are not maintaining this equilibrium what we are writing here. So, in order to have this equilibrium we need to make sure that there is no N2 formation happening upon dissociation of ammonia in the gas chamber. So, the fortunate thing is ammonia is very unstable molecule, but its dissociation is rather slow if we do not have a significant amount of catalytic surface. So, because of that the slow nature of that 
instead of having a sealed atmosphere, if we maintain continuous flow of required NH3 H2 gas chemistry and then because of maintaining a constant flow and the slow dissociation of ammonia, we will be able to maintain this the, the, the partial pressures of NH3 and H2 in the gas chamber as expected from such reaction equilibrium. When we do that, then only we can do the have a uh, practically the nitriding. If we do not do this continuous flow of the gas and then actually we will not have any nitriding because our atmosphere will become N2 and H2 gas and that we know that N2 gas will not be able to do significant nitriding. So, now by knowing this so called nitriding potential, we can now look at that suppose if you want to produce a some phase diagram for example, iron and nitrogen that means we need to have a means to add different amounts of nitrogen at a given temperature for example, and then uh, this controlling this and the temperature we will be able to produce this different phases of the iron nitrogen system. So, how we can do that? So, that actually you see that from the reaction equilibrium. Now, at a given temperature for example, we take 550 degree Celsius ok. What is shown here is so called a Leherer diagram ok. This is uh, nothing but an activity diagram where we are showing as a function of temperature a different values of nitriding potential what are all the equilibrium phases of the phase fields of the iron nitrogen system. Like here we see the different iron nitrogen phases, it is alpha iron with some amount of nitrogen and Fe 4 n nitride and epsilon nitride. And these all things can be stabilized at a given temperature by appropriately controlling the nitriding potential. That is what you see here that now we are able to actually if you maintain the temperature of 550 and if you maintain the nitriding potential within this region then you will have simply BCC iron with dissolved nitrogen inside. That means, we are within this region of the phase diagram ok, that is the uh, phase field of the alpha iron. And now, if we use the nitriding potential which are falling in the region of this gamma prime, we are able to produce this gamma prime iron nitride. This is a iron nitrogen compound on the sample surface. Similarly, if you maintain the conditions of nitriding potential at this temperature in this region, we will be able to produce this gamma prime and epsilon iron nitrides. It is a another iron nitride, it is a uh, given as a uh, you know the notion with epsilon. So, now you see that always for example, if you form a diffusion couple between so called a nitrogen sours, a rich in nitrogen sours and the iron, what we expect is suppose if you have a iron solid with a nitrogen sours, depending on the level of this nitrogen sours, we start to generate the composition of nitrogen varying as a function of depth into this right into the iron lattice. Now, where different nitrogen contents you expect to see the different phases of the iron nitrogen phase diagram as expected at that composition. So, that is what exactly you see here. Now, we are diffusing in the nitrogen from the uh, nitrogen uh, ammonia hydrogen mixture having a high chemical potential ok. That is where actually we are able to produce these iron nitrides. As we have seen that when we use only N2 gas with a Gibbs energy surface you know the uh, curve of the iron nitrogen solid and the iron nitrogen compounds which we have seen in the last class, one can actually go to high chemical potentials of nitrogen and stabilize these iron nitrides. But as we said before, these iron nitrides are metastable. So, they always have a tendency to decompose into N2 gas and iron. That means, if you produce them and leave them at the high temperature for longer time, then they will start to decompose. That is where you start to reach the porous iron nitride layers. So, with this I will uh, now explain you what are all the uh, microstructures we can expect when we do a nitriding of a steel ok. So, if we take a solid 
steel sample and if you place it in the ammonia hydrogen gas mixture and once you equilibrate it there then it starts to develop the different iron nitrogen phases and as I explained before suppose what you are seeing here in this picture is the cross section of a sample that means if you have a plate of a steel and now actually this plate after the treatment you cut it and you are seeing this cross section. So, then we are able to see this is the surface there you will see the faces expected for highest nitrogen content and then as a function of that you start to see other faces which are expected at low nitrogen contents that is what you see here. What you see here is and top here is the nitriding atmosphere ok this is all the gas phase and this is the surface of the sample. and then the ammonia dissociates here and supplies the nitrogen and that nitrogen diffuses inwardly and you will have a highest nitrogen content at the surface and that starts to decrease. So, now if you see as a function of time what evolves is as a function of time initially a small amount of nitrogen goes into the uh, solid then you form actually so called this diffusion zone ok. This is what is said as diffusion zone. What is diffusion zone? Diffusion zone is nothing but you have a ferrite matrix with dissolved nitrogen ok. The nitrogen goes into the octahedral interstitial voids of the BCC iron lattice and that is what we call it as classically diffusion zone. Now, if you have a steel which has containing some elements which have a strong affinity to nitrogen ok such as aluminum or chromium. What is the meaning of strong affinity for nitrogen? For example, you have an iron and that requires certain level of nitrogen being dissolved in the lattice before we can form any iron nitrides. Similarly, for the other so elements like you know the having a high affinity to nitrogen like aluminum or chromium they will require a very small amount of nitrogen to be dissolved before they can form nitrides. So, now if you have such elements they start to form their nitrides for example, aluminum nitride or chromium nitride and that means you will have a BCC iron matrix with a dissolved nitrogen ok. You have a dissolved nitrogen atoms in the octahedral interstitial whites and if this contains the elements like aluminum or something you start to form the precipitates of these nitrides in the diffusion zone ok. And now the ferrite matrix containing dissolved nitrogen as well as the alloying elements nitride particles also called as diffusion zone in a actual nitriding steel. Now on top of that you have a high nitrogen content that implies that you can form the iron nitrides because the gamma prime iron nitride requires less nitrogen that forms after the diffusion zone saturates and then comes the epsilon iron nitride. So, now this is what actually the process which happens in a commercial steel as you know that a commercial steel contains several elements right depending on the requirement of the bulk property of the you know the uh, component you will add several elements into the steel. That means, when you do the nitriding all these elements together with iron will try to interact with the inwardly diffusing nitrogen. So, that means, we need to understand how this multi component steel responds to the inwardly diffusing nitrogen and then that is where we will be able to understand what exactly the kind of microstructure develops and with that we will be able to understand what kind of properties these nitrided layers will have. For example, this diffusion zone where we have only the ferrite matrix with you know the nitride particles of alloying elements is like a composite ok. We have made actually a ferrite matrix with nano sized precipitates and this is known to have a very good fatigue properties. The reason being because we have a dissolved nitrogen and it actually brings the surface region to expand and that imposes a residual stress macroscopic compressive residual stress that leads to the enhancement in the fatigue properties. Whereas, these iron nitride layers epsilon and gamma prime both together is called as a compound layer. It has got a these compounds have got a very good anti corrosion properties that you will see that when you do a uh, etching of the 
polished surface of a nitrided steel, then you will see that this iron nitride layers does not react with the your etching reagent. So, that means that they are actually chemically more inert than your base steel. So, but these that is because of that they also have a very good hardness. So, they lead to the improvement of the tribological and anti corrosion properties. So, now in the uh, next lecture we will try to see what actually happens in a rather simple uh, alloys when we see how they respond to the nitriding. For example, if you take a pure iron or a iron aluminum alloy, so that we can you know understand in these simple systems how the system runs and then one can actually the you know the obtained knowledge from such model alloys can be transferred to a actual commercial steel then we can actually obtain a precise understanding of the behavior of a multi component steel during nitriding. Okay. So, with this I am ending this lecture.